Hello Algebra students. Today we're doing part two of unit three lesson D where we apply multiple laws of exponents in a single problem. So our objective is I can simplify an expression using multiple laws of exponents. Before we get to work let's quickly review our exponent rules. When we are multiplying we add our exponents. When we are dividing we subtract exponents. If we raise a power to a power, we multiply exponents. The zero exponent rule is anything raised to the zero is, answer that question, one. And then the negative exponent rule means somebody needs to find a new home. If it's in the numerator, it needs to go to the denominator and vice versa. Okay, number one. Simplify using the exponent rules, evaluate when, when possible. Whenever you have a fraction, there's implied parentheses around the numerator and the denominator that says you really need to simplify your numerator and then simplify your denominator before you worry about reducing. So what I'm going to do is first look at this as if only the numerator is my problem, and I'm going to rewrite this, grouping my terms together. So I'm going to put 3 by itself times x squared times x squared all over x to the third. Then I can start simplifying. My 3 will come down. Since I'm multiplying the x terms, I will add those exponents. And the denominator still stays x to the third. However, to get our final answer, we do have to simplify our x's. Since we are dividing, we will subtract. So we'll get 3 x to the 4 minus 3 and just be left with x to the first power or x by itself. Okay, number two. Again, we've got a, a quotient, but we're also raising to a power. Order of operations does tell you parentheses first, then exponents. And when I approach these problems, I like to simplify the inside first before I apply 2 to every single term, and I'll be working with smaller numbers. Hopefully, that will increase my accuracy percentage. So first thing I'm going to do is rewrite 4, because there's nothing to reduce my 4 with. I'll also rewrite x, because I only have one x. However, y to the first over y to the third, think back to your pre-algebra days. 1y on top, 3y's on the bottom. You cancel one set of y's. You're still left with two y's on the bottom. If you apply your exponent rules, you'll have y to the first minus third. You get y to the negative two. It still sends y to the denominator. So no matter which way you think about these problems, your y's are ending up in the denominator. Now we still have to raise all this simplified terms, all these terms, to the second power. So I like to do a quick rewrite because I don't want to lose anything. This 2 attacks every single term that's inside the parentheses. So I'll have 4 squared times x squared, because that's really x to the first power, all over y squared squared. Like I said, just a quick rewrite. Now I'm going to evaluate. 4 squared gives me 16. x squared stays x squared. y squared squared gives you y to the fourth. And that's your final answer. All right, number three. There is a lot going on with number three. Again, I would first simplify the inside before I would worry about that exponent on the outside. Sometimes when I do these problems, so if things line up the way I want them to, I'll draw lines between like terms. Helps me focus. Now, negative 3 over 15, 3 goes into 15 5 times. So 3 would reduce to 1, 15 would reduce to 5. Now, before things get too messy, I'm going to do a quick rewrite of 1 over 5. Then I've got a to the 3rd over a to the 7th. Maybe I should just rewrite that now. And b to the 4th over b squared. Don't forget, we still have to raise this to the 3rd power. Bringing down my negative one-fifth, a to the third over a to the seventh 
gives me four a's in my denominator. It turns out to a to the negative 4, a to the negative 4 would move to the denominator. And then b to the 4th over b squared would give me b squared in the numerator. Now I have something I can finally raise to the 3rd power. Okay, be careful with this negative. That negative 1, when it gets raised to the 3rd power, stays inside the parentheses. Again, I'm doing a quick rewrite before I do any evaluation. Rewrite b squared to the third power in the denominator. We'll rewrite 5 to the third power and a to the fourth to the third power. Now I'm going to treat this like a series of mini problems. Evaluating negative 1 to the third, I get negative 1. Evaluating my power to a power for b, I'll get b to the sixth. In my denominator, 5 to the third, let's see, 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 again. You have 5 quarters, you should have a buck 25, again no decimals here. And then you have a to the 4th to the 3rd, multiply your exponents, a to the 12th. And you should always give your final answer one more look to make sure that there aren't any terms that could be reduced. But that looks good. Okay, save 4, 5, and 6 for tomorrow. Let's look at number 7. Now, in number 7, they're throwing some negative exponents at us, but I'm going to approach these problems similarly, and I'm going to reduce the inside first. I see 12 over 3, I see x squared over x, and then I see a y all by itself. So I'm going to do a quick rewrite, 12 over 3, put my x's together, x squared over x, and I'm going to leave y by itself all in the denominator. 12 over 3 is going to reduce to 4, x squared over x gives me 1x in my numerator, and that'll leave my y in the denominator, all raised to the negative 2 power. Now what you could do to take care of that negative sign real quick, flip your fraction, put y over 4x, and still make it to the positive 2 power now. Now do some evaluating. y to the first to the second just going to be y squared. You'll have 4 squared, and you'll have x to the first to the second. And some of you may have solved this problem already, and that's perfectly fine. So your numerator is y squared. Your denominator will have to do 4 times 4 to get 16, and the x squared is going to stay x squared. Final answer, y squared over 16x squared. Alright, number 8 lot going on with 8, two ways you could approach the problem. You can apply your negative 3 to every term inside. You could take care of these negatives. You subtract negative 5 minus a negative 2. I tend to avoid negatives if I can. So I think the first thing I would do is swap those two values. And I would rewrite this with positive exponents and say, yeah, that's the same as 3 x to the second over x to the fifth all raised to the negative third. All right, I'll worry about that in a second. First, I'm going to reduce my x terms. 3 has to come along for the right. I have x squared over x to the fifth. That's going to leave me with 3x's in my denominator. If I applied the exponent rules and I did 2 minus 5, I'd get x to the negative 3, which tells me that has to go to the denominator. Now, this is all raised to the negative 3 power. What I would do next, take a flip, x to the 3rd over 3, all raised to the 3rd power, and then I think I would finally execute that power. So you've got x to the 3rd to the 3rd over 3 to the 3rd, and let's evaluate. x to the 3rd to the 3rd will give you x to the 9th, 3 to the 3rd, going to give you 3 times 3 times 3, which will be 27. There are several ways you could have approached that problem. You could have distributed this 3 right off the bat. You would have had positives here, so eventually you would have gotten next to the ninth in the numerator, and 3 to the negative 3 would put the 27 in the denominator. It's all in the approach. No one way is better than the other. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, number six. 
I think what I'm going to do for number six is apply some of the exponent rules. Or I'm sorry, for number nine. So let's simplify the inside. Six is going to stay six. You'll have x to the third minus a negative four. Now, like I said before, I like to avoid the, the negatives as much as possible. But when I see a three minus a negative four, that'll give me plus a positive. And that makes me happy. And then I look at my y's. And I'm going to do a quick rewrite, rewrite with those. I have y to the negative 1, and there's a 1 here. So that's also minus 1. Think about that for a second. y to the negative 1 minus 1. OK. Again, we're not doing any math just yet, just some rewrites. And this is all being raised to the negative 1 power. So let's simplify our x and y terms. We'll get 6, x to the 7th y to the negative 2, negative 1 minus 1 gives you negative 2, still being raised to the negative 1 power. At this point, you, could, you have a few options too. You can move your y or you can apply the negative 1. I think I'm just going to apply the negative 1 to all my terms on the inside. So I'll have 6 to the negative 1, I'll have x to the 7th to the negative 1, and y to the negative 2 to the negative 1, and then treat it as three mini problems. 6 to the negative 1 does not change the sign, it just changes the location. Becomes 1 over 6. x to the 7th to the, ne <coughs> to the negative 1 becomes x to the negative 7. And y to the negative 2 to the negative 1, when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. So we got lucky on that one it becomes y squared. So our last step is to take care of that negative exponent. So I'm going to have in my final answer 1 y squared all over 6 x to the seventh. The, y in, the one in front of the y squared is optional. All right, two final problems. I know some of these are difficult. Hang in there. You may have to watch the video more than one time or use it as a reference again later. All right, number 13, trying to multiply two fractions together. Sometimes we cross reduce, but in this case, my first term has a power of 3 associated with it. So if I reduced 16 with 2, would not give me the right answer because I need to be reducing 16 with whatever 2 to the third power is. Just happens to be 8. But this is how you want to approach this problem. Take care of the outside exponents first. Do a quick rewrite. 2 to the third, s to the first to the third is just s to the third. In the denominator, we've got 3 to the third and t to the third. And this is all times t to the fifth over 16. Let's do some simplifying, some evaluating. 2 to the third will give us 8. s to the third stays s to the third. And t to the fifth for now stays t to the fifth all over, 3 to the third is 27. Let's group it with the 16, because we're going to be multiplying those two numbers together. And what's left over is t to the third. I've said it before, but try to keep your work very well organized. It's really easy to get lost in these problems. All right, a quick check. 8 divided by 27 times 16 if we're good at fractions, and we know we can reduce the 8 and the 16 and get a 2 and multiply 2 times 27, which gives you 54, awesome. You should have 54 in your denominator. Otherwise, in your calculator, if you put 8 divided by, in parentheses, 24 times 16, it'll give you a decimal answer. Hit math, enter, enter, and eventually you should get 1 over 54. Now, that'll take care of all your numbers. S to the third, there's no other S term in the problem, so it's just going to remain S to the third. And then T to the fifth over T to the third, when you subtract those exponents, you get T squared in your numerator. Okay, final problem. Again, taking care of the exponent on the outside, applying it to all the terms on the inside before we actually try to find the product here. We have negative three inside parentheses. That's going to make a difference. Raised to the second power. x to the third also raised to the second power. 
in my denominator. I have 2 raised to the second power, and I have y to the first to the second power times 1 over x squared. Simplify what we can. 3 squared when it's negative. 3 times 3 should give us a positive 9. x to the third squared gives us an x to the sixth. In the denominator, 2 squared will give you 4. y to the first squared gives you y squared. All times 1 over x squared. Okay. I think we're almost done. 9 over 4 can't be reduced. They do not have any common factors. x to the sixth over x squared. We have a numerator, we have a denominator, we're dividing, we subtract exponents. So we should get x to the fourth. And finally, my y squared term, there's no other y term, so it'll just stay in our denominator. 4y squared. Okay, if you need to rewatch the video, look at some of these examples again. Please do so, they are confusing. Um, otherwise, we'll answer the rest of them in class tomorrow. Thank you.